In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to create an HVAC plan in Revit. And we're going to create um, this drawing. And really, the point is to do this for a small house, for an ADU in this case. Um, traditionally, we would um, export the architectural model to a mechanical engineer. They would uh, link the file uh, into, they would insert it, use link Revit to insert our architectural file into their mechanical file. Um, but in this tutorial, we're going to show how to create the mechanical plan directly in the architectural template that we're working in. So this is in the scenario where we would be modeling this ourselves as the architect and working uh, all, with, all within the same file. So on a small project like this, this is uh, the, the typical use for it. So we will be covering the following. We're going to have uh, all of these elements in this model. We're going to have diffusers. Um, these are the type of diffusers we're going to use floor mounted. The ductwork is going to be all under the floor within the crawl space. The air handling unit is going to be a split system, horizontal 30,000 BTU, so for a small ADU. And the air conditioning unit will be a heat pump split system, 2.5 to 5 tons. And we're going to use duct tags to tag all of our ductwork in the end. So this whole system will be under the crawl space except for the AC unit, which will be just outside. So to get started, we're going to take the file that you've been working on. This may be uh, the floor plan for your ADU or small house. Um, we're going to open up the one of the elevations because we're going to add a new level to this. So in addition to the levels that exist, we're going to go to uh, architecture level, and we're going to create a new level that's two foot six below level one. So this we'll call crawl space. So once that level is created, we'll see that there's now a crawl space floor plan that's generated. And I'm doing this so that I can place my air handling unit on this level. So it'll be below the house, um, you know, within the, the stem wall of this. So that's not modeled here, but all of this would be operating in this crawl space on a layer of plastic. So if I open up that crawl space, um, I still see everything. I have a floor here. Um, I'm going to need this floor because it's going to host my floor registers, so all these uh, diffusers for my supply and my return. Um, so I'm going to load those. Um, I'm also going to have to hide this floor once I add my uh, air handling unit somewhere in the center of the, the ADU. So some things that we're gonna we're gonna do um, just to set the graphic uh, overrides. We're going to scroll down to in the project browser. We're gonna go to families. We're gonna go to duct systems. And for supply air. We're going to double click on that. What we want to do is give all of our supply side uh, uh, ductwork, all of that we want to be blue. So we're going to give our supply side a blue override. Hit OK. And then 
or we want all of our return side uh, equipment. We want all of that to be pink. So we're gonna make that pink. So this way when we draw them, it'll be very clear in the drawing uh, what's supply and what's return. Okay, we're also gonna load a series of uh, connectors uh, and and basically these are going to be the elbows and T's that we need the uh, to load normally I think these would load in the mechanical file if we were to use the mechanical template but again we're, we're in the architecture template so we're gonna have to load some of this automatic uh, manually so we're gonna go to families ducts rectangular and default, we're gonna click on that. We're gonna edit these routing preferences here. Um, so what we wanna do is, is load a family because Revit needs to know how to handle an elbow in the ductwork, how to handle a, a, a junction uh, across which, which family to load when we have these various scenarios. So we're going to load all of these. So um, for example, elbow, we're going to go load family. Now we're going to start off in the US Imperial. We're going to find duct. We're going to go to fittings, rectangular, elbows, and we're going to find rectangular elbow radius. We're going to hit open. And now we can find it here. So we're going to use uh, 1.5. All right, so T is already here. We're going to do the same for junction. Um, so we're going to find load family. In this case, we're going to go up to T's. We're going to add rectangular T with transition. So under junction, we're going to use rectangular T with transition. And then cross, we're going to load a rectangular cross as well. And again, we're just telling Revit how to handle each of these conditions as we're making our duct work. And then under transitions, we want Transitions. We want rectangular length, eccentric transition. And then we're going to scroll down here. We want caps. That should have something. Caps. We're going to use a rectangular end cap standard. And then again find it here so once we load it you have to still find it okay and the rest of these should be fine as is let's load this multi-shape transition rectangular to round so to find that we'll need multi-shape transition we'll need a rectangular to round transition. So we can do it by length or angle. And we'll say 45. Okay, so we're not gonna use oval so we don't have to worry about that. 
um, but now we have transitions and multi-shape transitions. So this will inform Revit how to go from a rectangular duct to a round duct. Okay, and then, so we have that, so we'll hit OK. And we're also going to do this for our round ducts as well. So under the project browser, go down under families to ducts, round duct, and then double click on default. We're going to do the same thing, basically telling Revit how to deal with each of these. So now we want to find round um, fittings. So we'll go to round. So first we need an elbow. So let's just do a round elbow open. I'll load that. We need a junction. So transitions. I'm just trying to predict any scenarios. Let's try a round T, round T, and then I'm going to load across. Then another transition. So I'm using round transition 45 degree. And then this rectangular to round, that's a scenario we may encounter. So I'm going to load that as well. So this would be under multi shape transitions, rectangular to round, and I'll use angle. Forty-five. Okay. And then cap. We'll just give this a type of cap. And again, we're under round caps, round end cap. We have to add it here. All right, so once all of these are populated with the families that we've loaded, we can hit OK and hit OK. All right, so once we've loaded all of that, um, now we can go ahead and start bringing in uh, the families that we're going to use. Um, so there's a number of different elements. We have to, again, referring to our outline, we want to bring in supply registers, rectangular, floor mounted, and return registers, rectangular, floor mounted. So let's do that. So I'm going to go insert load family, and then starting up at Imperial again, um, we're going to go to mechanical, MEP, air side components, air terminals, and we're going to find both. We're going to find, again, referring to this supply register rectangular. So we have the floor mounted um, supply and then return as well. Okay, so I hold control and I select both of these. So this will give us both supply registers and a return register that we can use. And I'm going to open those. So now they're loaded into the file and I can go to, I can hit CM as the keyboard shortcut 
to load these. I can find the register. So the return register and the supply register show up here. If I just start typing register, um, I'm gonna use a four by eight supply register. And it's gonna look for a, a, a vertical face at first. So I wanna place this on a face. So I still have my floor turned on, so I'm gonna take advantage of that now. So I'm gonna place these under each window to counteract the conditions of um, convection. So we're going to place all of the supply, and again, this is where we're gonna supply um, conditioned air in the ADU. And then I hit spacebar to run it the other way. I'm just aligning these. Okay, so these will be my supply registers. I've gone ahead and placed them throughout the, the ADU such that the whole space will be covered, not missing any rooms. And I'm gonna supply to the perimeter and I'm gonna have one return in the center. And that's really to um, just have one location kind of centrally located far away enough from all of the supply so we don't have a closed loop so we're going to do the same thing we're going to go to cm for component and instead of supply i'm going to add a return register and i'm going to do an eight by four or four by eight and I have to place on face, hit space bar, and I'm gonna place it right here. So this could also be wall mounted. This could be, um, you know, all of these could be ceiling registers. Uh, the air handling unit could be in the, sitting on the floor. It could be in a mechanical closet, it can be in the attic. In this case, we're putting it in the crawl space. So once we've placed all of our registers, we're gonna go ahead and hide the floor. So I, I tab through this to select the floor. I'm going to hide it. So I can do a temporary hide isolate and hide element. So with the floor hidden, now again, I'm, I'm still in my crawl space. So when I drop something in, in this case an air handler, I'm gonna place it on this crawl space floor. So I'm going to go to CM for component, or I can go to systems, uh, mechanical equipment. So I've previously loaded this, if, if this isn't loaded, I'm gonna to go to load family, so insert load family. Going back up to US Imperial, I'm gonna go down to mechanical, go to MEP, airside components, air handling units, and referring to my outline, I'm going to pull in a split system horizontal 30,000. So air handling unit, split system, horizontal. And so this means air flows from, from one side to the other um, versus an upflow system where the air would rise or a downflow system where the air would fall um, depending on where it's located in the house. So I'm gonna use this, hit open. And then to add it, I will hit CM for component. Again, I'm gonna to have to find it. So air handling unit, and I'm gonna use a 30,000 BTU. So one of the smaller um, air handling units. Um, I'm gonna, I hit spacebar to rotate this, just because I know 
uh, which direction. Um, so on one side we have um, supply. This is the supply side because it has the X, and return has the strike through. Okay, so Revit will generate um, layouts for ductwork. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's it's uh, it usually takes some tweaking. So um, let's see if this works. I'm going to select all of my supply registers and my air handling unit and hit duct. So this is going to be supply, mechanical supply one. And I have the ability to generate a layout. So this is going to be Revit's best guess at a scenario where I can uh, connect to all of these floor registers. And it's going to come up with a number of scenarios here for me. So I can scroll through these and look at all the different iterations. Um, I'd like to have a plenum with branches ducting out from it, and this is too complicated. This looks pretty simple. We can also go to settings, and again, this has the, the main and then how to branch off of it. And by default, it's setting this offset to nine feet. So it doesn't know that we're operating in the floor. We're going to set this to zero for the main, and we're going to make this a rectangular duct by default. So we're going to have a, a main rectangular plenum and branch ducts that will be round. We're going to offset zero. Flex duct type round and we can set a maximum length for these flex ducts, so a rule to set for it, but we're going to leave that at 6. Okay, so this is this scenario. We can always modify this or create our own, but let's see what happens. We generate this. No auto route solution was found. So to look at this in 3D, So it's, it's a start, it's being broken up in a number of places. So this is going to take some, some tinkering to get this to work. And I'll hide my floor in 3D as well, just to show what's happening. Okay, one thing I'm going to do, so next I want to connect my air handling unit to each of these floor registers. So I'm going to select my air handling unit, go to edit type, and I'm going to change some of these dimensions. So for dimension F and E, I'm going to set those to 8 inches. For dimension D and A, I'm going to set those to 1 foot each. And so that'll change the size of my supply and my return coming in respectively here. So. I'm going to set F and E to 8 inches and D and A to 1 foot. Okay, so that's reducing the size of this. So now my output, if I click on this, you'll see that the output is 12 inches by 12 inches. So I can go ahead and add the ductwork that I want. I can add this ductwork, continue to add duct. I'm going to make sure this is 12 inches by 12 inches to 
conform with what I have already. And I'll align these and then just have this connect with each of my registers. I have an elbow here that I want to turn into a T, so I'm going to click on this. And now I can select this and I can go to duct, connect these. And it's going to make a transition here based on those transitions that I loaded. So I'm going to go back to duct, come back, and then just continue to connect all of my registers. So in situations like this that are at an angle, a rectangular duct may not work. So I'm going to go with a round duct. So I'm going to hit duct and then in properties set this to round. And we'll set this to 12, or 8 inch. Set this to 8 inch. So in this situation, you could either go to a flex duct to connect these, or I could simply align it, and hopefully this will solve the problem. with around eight inch and that looks like it worked. So here we have a T when we want to actually create a cross. So I'm going to hit this plus and it adds a connection on this side now too. So it still won't let me connect from there. But I'm going to go to duct, rectangular, see if this works first. And that does. So we've set up the supply system now, and now we have to connect to this return. So to do that, I'm going to click on this side, and now what's coming in is an 8x8. Eight eight. So I can click on that, pull this out, come out to here. And if I can connect this, great. If not, I'm going to once again go to a round duct and see if this will let me connect. And that did. Okay, so we have supply on the perimeter of the house and return in the center. And this is a horizontal air handling unit. So the last thing, well, the second to last thing we're going to do, referring to our outline here, we want to add our air conditioning unit. So this is going to be a heat pump and it's going to be a split system 2.5 to 5 tons. So we're going to go to load family. So insert load family. And we're going to go to under under libraries. We're going to go to imperial mechanical MEP, airside components, air conditioners, and we will see see that it's not here. So we'll have to go to uh, it's a uh, heat pump. It's under general components. So we'll go to general components, heat pumps, and we'll find this heat pump 2.5 to 5 tons hit in there. So now I can go CM and we'll make sure, let's go back to the first floor here. So CM and I'm going to place this on the first floor. 
behind my ADU. And you'll see that there is both an in and an out. Um, what we're doing is we're going to connect the coolant lines from this air conditioner, this compressor condenser to the air handler. So rather than technically connecting them, we're just going to simply use detail lines to connect these. So in this crawl space drawing, I'm going to use a detail line DL and I'm going to make this a medium line and I'm simply going to connect both of these. So one is going in, one is going out. So for the sake of this drawing, that's sufficient. And we're also going to tag all of our duct work here. So we want to go to annotate, tag by category, and when we mouse over this, it's going to say there's no tag loaded for ducts. Do you want to load one now? Yes. So we'll go back up to Imperial. We'll go to annotations, mechanical, duct, and we're going to use a duct size tag. So now when I go back to annotate, I will see when I mouse over this, the proper size for each duct. And I'm going to set this scale to quarter inch so that these come in at a proper size. So I can go back to tag by category and I'm just gonna tag all of my ducts. So this is a eight inch diameter round duct, 12 by 12. This is an eight inch by eight inch. Okay, so this is just the configuration that worked. We didn't calculate the size of ducts, um, but this is, for this example, uh, enough to, to generate a layout.